Greetings from our nation's capital here in Washington, D.C. My name is Terry McDenis. I'm honored to serve as the president and CEO of RTCA. RTCA has a tremendously rich history with a focus on standards development, collective decision making, and consensus building. And we've served the aviation community with distinction and effectiveness since 1935. We are continuing to evolve RTCA and our, our role to support new and emerging trends in the industry. Our mission is to, to empower and enable aviation through collaboration and continue to build upon our legacy and our exceptional reputation of accomplishment. And towards this goal, we're excited to expand our presence with our, our government, industry, and educational partners along with the entire aviation community. And so today I'm very pleased to be joined by Dr. Ratan Katwa, the lead strategist and designer for human factors at the Boeing company. Dr. Katwa, thank you for joining me today and welcome. So Ratan, before we get started um, in hearing about some of your perspectives on today's role of human factors in design and certification of flight deck systems, can you give us a little bit of an overview of your, your background in this field? Yes, uh, Terry, first, uh, let me thank the RTCA for having me here, having this important discussion with you. Um, and good, good afternoon, good morning uh, to everybody around the globe. Um, I'll just start with the, the basics here, Terry. You, you know, PhD in, uh, human, in, in, in aeronautical engineering uh, from uh, the University of Bristol in the UK with some specialization in human factors, of course. And early part of my career was spent in Amsterdam with the, uh, the, the National Aerospace Laboratory, the NLR, very well-known entity there. Focus there was flight deck and flight safety human factors. I spent then uh, about four years in Cedar Rapids, Iowa with uh, Rockwell Collins. And again, focus there, integrated flight decks uh, for, uh, for business aviation. And then I spent the last 22 years up until about six weeks ago at the at, at essentially here in the in the Seattle area with Honeywell Aerospace and, and moved up through my career again all of it was flight deck and flight safety human factors and my last position there was the senior chief engineer for flight deck human factors. Great well it's a tremendous background I'm sure you've, you've seen a lot of uh, changes over the years both in in human factors research and their applications so Tell us a little bit of what kind of changes that you've actually witnessed. Profound changes over 31 years. Um, we've had what I would consider to be a technology revolution, which has had a profound impact on, on, on the way we design flight decks. So if you think about the things that have happened, we've got bigger and more powerful displays, processors, databases that didn't exist in the past, for example, terrain or, or airport moving. Uh, maps and, and, and the databases we need for those sorts of things. But the, the key is that, that there are some real changes that have occurred here. When, when I started my career, let's talk about interaction, crew interaction with the flight deck as, as the first area. Individual controls for individual functions. About 25 years ago, we had cursor control devices that were introduced in the flight deck. And we moved on, of course, since then. Today, we see uh, touchscreen devices that are commonplace and even the, the, the introduction of voice in business aviation. So the way we interact with the flight deck. Number two really is enhanced perception or to put it in simple language, enhanced situation awareness. What, what these enablers have allowed us to do is introduce technology that collectively have had a profound impact on the safety of the world's fleet. No question about it. And I'll give you examples of those. And again, this is through my career, the introduction of TCAS, the introduction of predictive wind shear alerting systems, and needless to say, the introduction of the enhanced ground proximity warning system. We've had other technologies, again, these are enablers to enhance safety, head up displays, I've already talked about airport moving maps. So that's sort of number two. The third area is automation. Now, what we, what we tend to do, uh, human factor specialists and pilots, we immediately go to the automatic flight control system, but I'll tell you, the profound influence of automation across the entire flight deck. And I really term it information automation. And, and what we've done collectively as an industry here is we've taken you know, multiple pieces of data from across the aircraft and we've fused those things together to do two key things, right? One is to simplify the operation 
of, of what's on the flight deck and provide superior in interpretation of that information. Very, very important that. So again, you know, simplify the operation and, and provide superior interpretation of that data. So to give you examples here, again, this is information automation, you know, synoptics uh, formats in an, in an, uh, for a non-normal situation associated with an electronic checklist. Uh, the introduction of synthetic vision in business aviation. So just two examples of the sorts of things that have happened. So, so those are the three areas. Num number four, certification. When I came into this industry, the key document that really was floating around was the, the J interim policy human factors for flight deck. And of course, as we've seen the evolution of certification, we've seen the introduction of uh, 25.13.02, as you very well know, from both IASA and EFA. And just in the last year, we've had the introduction of 29.13.02 uh, and 27.13.02. In other words, human factors rotorcraft from EASA. So that's really evolved in, 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 in a very, um, uh, I think in a very positive way. And lastly, um, we see changes in, 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 in the user demographics, just unbelievable impact of technologies that all of us use at home and the impact that's had. So in other words, collectively in the industry, we're finding ourselves now designing for the, the digital natives. In other words, kids, you know, the, the, the generation of kids that I have, you know, that are growing up on, uh, on, 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 on basically on, on, on advanced uh, uh, consumer devices. So I think those are really the key areas, Terry, where we've seen huge changes in, in, in that 30 years. So you've had a great career, you know, most recently at Honeywell's where you and I met, and uh, now you're at Boeing. So congratulations on, on your, your change. Um, so how is the, the human factors work that you're doing now at Boeing different maybe than, than some of the other work that you've done in the past? Yeah, so, so I think, as I've already said, my, my focus has been, you know, certainly with two avionics suppliers, Rockwell Collins, and, and Honeywell Aerospace, where, where I've been focused on the design and certification of, of individual systems within the, the flight deck. And of course, working with many of the world's aircraft manufacturers and developing an integrated offering, in other words, an integrated flight deck. Now, at Boeing Commercial Airplanes, that focus doesn't go away, of course, at all. But what I would tell you is that, that my role is really expanding in, in a more holistic application of human factors across the entire aircraft. So, so what that really means is I'm, I'm dealing with an expanded persona, uh, set of personas. So of course, you know, we've already talked about the flight crew in the flight deck, but if we now start going to the cabin, you've got the cabin uh, crew, you've got the user experience for passengers, you've got line maintenance, you've got ground operations personnel. So you can see here that it's really a broader and a much more holistic application of human factors throughout the customer journey. But the one thing I'll tell you, Terry, that doesn't change is the relentless pursuit of safety that just doesn't change in my role right and, and that really means providing safe and robust products for our global customers so so one of the things that's really near and dear to my heart is, is encouraging the new generation of aviation professionals that are now coming into our industry and, and given the importance of human factors, perhaps even, even more emphasis on human factors than we've seen in the past, it seems like a, a really exciting field for some of the new and upcoming engineers. So what would be your counsel to those folks, someone uh, that you, something you could provide to them if they're interested in coming into this field? Yeah, a really, really important uh, question. You know, a lot of people have talked about, you know, shortages in pilots and, and, and maintenance. Crews, but we're seeing challenges also in, in this field as well, uh, collectively across the industry. Anytime I've asked, I've been asked this question, you know, there are five key competencies that I would encourage, you know, new uh, human factors engineers to, to our industry to really focus on. Number one, obviously, is to have a key competency in, in human factors. Number two, flight operations for, for obvious reasons. Number three, systems engineering, things aren't done in a vacuum, you know, or each organization has a process that they've got to go through. And certainly in the flight deck certification, that's the fourth competence. And then number five is really user experience. It's a more contemporary look at human facts. It's fusing, you know, what we typically do in human factors with industrial, visual, and interaction design. So I would say those five key competencies are key. They've served me well. The second area here really is, again, for, 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 for new 
engineers in, in this field is really to go uh, deep, so really get engaged, get your hands dirty in, in specific programs, but to go broad as well. So going deep and broad is really, really important. And my last piece of advice, and it's really fundamental to, to what I've done for the last 31 years, is engineering excellence. It's the, the hallmark of everything that we do, and it's the hallmark of, of, of basically developing safe and robust products and services for, for our customers, no matter where we work. But, but those are the key three key, area, key areas that I would, I would counsel somebody in, in, in focusing on, Terry. Great. Uh, Ratan, thank you. It's, it's always fascinating to, to speak with you on this topic, and I really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to be with us today. I've been speaking with Dr. Ratan Kotla from the Boeing Company, who serves as their lead strategist and designer for human factors. I'll add that Dr. Kotla is part of a steering team we put together here at RTCA for a new training course in human factors in the certification process. Together with this steering team, RTCA has partnered with Georgia Tech University to develop this new course, which we're planning on rolling out next month. So if you're interested in learning more about this new training course on human factors, our standards development work, have any questions about our other available training, or interested in becoming part of the RTCA family of members so that you too can have a voice in developing aviation standards, please contact us directly through our website at www.rtca.org. The future of the aviation industry is very bright right now, and RTCA is proud to be a, a part of this dynamic and evolving time. Empowering innovation through collaboration is going to ensure a safe, secure, and sustainable aviation system, not just for today, but for future generations as well. Thank you for listening and, and have a great day.